What are the three blood vessels of the circulatory system? Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in today's video we're going to explore blood vessels and the circulatory system so that you can understand this in preparation for your level two or level three anatomy and physiology exam. Now these are really important to understand because we need to have the understanding of globally what happens in our circulatory system and the individual function and features and characteristics of each of these three blood vessels that make up the overall circulatory system. And you'll need to know this for those exams, so the level two and the level three, and we're gonna explore those here today. But before I go any further, I've got a couple of mock questions that will help you test your knowledge today. So once we finish the video, click the link to check out the mock questions and you'll be able to test your knowledge following today's content. So let's first of all explore the circulatory system. The circulatory system consists of our heart, and our blood vessels. Its role is to transport blood around the body. And in order to do that, the heart contracts. It does its contraction and it sends the blood around the body so that it can either go and pick up oxygen from the lungs, it can drop off carbon dioxide at the lungs, and it can also take that really important oxygen to the working muscles, the organs, every our brain, every other part of our body, and then remove the waste products and take it back out. Now that's the role of our circulatory system. But like I said, it's made up of the heart and the blood vessels. Today, we're looking at the blood vessels and there are three of them. You've got three different types, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Let's start by looking at arteries. These are the thickest of all of them. They've got the widest diameter of all blood vessels. And the reason for this is because they are always leaving. They're always on their way away from the heart. Now, if you imagine the blood inside the heart during a blood flow and circulatory system, the blood inside the heart will vary. It's basically going through a certain point of returning to the heart. Then you have a massive contraction of that chamber. And after that contraction, the blood exits via an artery. And as it goes out via that artery, the blood will be at its highest level of pressure because it's just experienced that big forceful contraction inside the heart. So it's got that high level of pressure in an artery. And that's why arteries have thick walls to deal with that level of pressure and to make sure they don't split under pressure, etc., or cause any damage. So they're gonna contain all this pressure and funnel it down into our arterioles and then further into our, uh, from our arteries into our arterioles and then further into our capillaries, which we'll get to in a moment. Now, as this is going through our whole body, they've got this arteries with their thick walls, high pressure inside. Notice that arteries will always go away from the heart. So notice that arteries begin with the letter A and so does the word away. Therefore, you know that it's always going to be that arteries are going away from the heart and they can vary in what they carry. Most of the times they'll carry oxygenated blood to the working parts of our, mus of our body, our muscles, our brain, our organs. But occasionally in the pulmonary artery, it will carry deoxygenated blood. And that only happens in the pulmonary artery. Now let's go and have a look at veins. Veins are going to carry blood into the heart. And a nice way of remembering this is that vein is spelt with I-N at the end and it's going into the heart. Now, as a result of this, it's been a long time since it's come across a contraction from the heart because it's got to go all the way around the body and then go back to the heart. And that means that it's carrying at a very low pressure. So it carries at a much lower pressure. And as a result of that, they have little valves. They also have much thinner walls. But these little valves create a one-way system so that blood can just flow in the desired direction back to the heart. So veins carry blood into the heart, arteries carry blood away from the heart, and the opposite occurs in terms of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So veins will mostly carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart, but there is the pulmonary artery which will carry oxygenated blood. So there's always just one exception, and that's either the pulmonary artery or the pulmonary vein. Now that we've got the arteries and we've got the veins, now let's go and have a look at the capillaries. Now these are tiny little cell walls. So basically the capillaries are tiny little blood vessels and they have very thin walls, which only are one cell thick. And that's because the idea of a capillary is to pass the contents of the blood 
through the cell wall into the muscle cell, into other cells, etc. And that's the whole idea, the, the delivery mechanism. It's like the little doorway to be able to move blood from the blood vessel into the nutrients, into the muscle, for example. Now that needs to happen both ways. So that's why the capillary has such a thin wall, a permeable wall that allows that movement to happen. That'll also happen around the alveoli in our lungs. So we've got these air sacs in our alveoli, which are covered in capillaries to allow for that transport and that gaseous exchange of both carbon dioxide and oxygen, either way between the alveoli and the capillary. So now you can see that capillaries are the tiny ones that have just one cell thick on the wall and they will allow for that permeable exchange of nutrients. Arteries are thicker and they will travel the, with high pressure, they'll move blood away from the heart. Veins are thinner, they have valves and they will move blood into the heart. So that is a quick whistle stop tour of your three types of blood vessels and how they interact within the circulatory system as a whole. If you want more help with your level three anatomy and physiology or your level two anatomy and physiology exam, then please do check out the link that is alongside this video for our revision mastery bootcamp because we will break down information and make it super clear so that you know exactly how to pass your exam with confidence first time or the next time that you go and try to pass your exam. So that brings us to the end of today's content. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember to go and download the mock questions. And if you want to leave a little quick comment below, let me know what your big takeaway has been from today's session. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.